Welcome to the video, everybody. My name is Stefan. So I'm going to talk about the very first web design freelance client I ever got. So this is going to go way back to the time of the dinosaurs, back in the 1990s. And I had just, well, I was in the process of selling out of my very first business. I uh, decided to leave that business for reasons which I won't get into here. And it was not tech related. It was totally unrelated to tech. And so I had to start fresh. Now the old business had nothing to do with tech, so I had to start fresh in the whole web space. And at that time, the web was very, very, very new. When I would approach prospective clients, go meet them, call them up on the phone or something, and say, hey, you know, you should get a website. And I would typically get, typically get the answer, what is a website? So it's a bit of a challenge. It was a bit of a challenge, but I was able to eventually find my very first client, which uh, was a good learning experience, and I'm gonna share that with you in this video. The biggest problem you have when you're first starting out is that you don't have a, a track record. You don't have something to show prospective clients. So the only thing you can do, really, especially if you're, you are a freelance developer, is first thing is get a website up and running. And the advice I give people is make sure that website looks good. So way back, that's what I did. I created my very first website as a freelancer. I had been writing websites for two, three years prior to that for my own business that I recently sold out of. So I put up a good looking website. And uh, so then I started mining for prospects. Now, how you do that today is uh, slightly different. Uh, what I did back then was just put up classified ads, talk to local business people I knew, just randomly talk to people at coffee shop owners, et cetera, local butchers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what you would do today, you know, you can go to some of the, the freelance websites, maybe start building up a record there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and of course, nobody's doing free, nobody's doing classified ads anymore, but maybe even Google ads might be uh, useful to you. That being said, what hasn't changed is that you should have a really nice looking website that's up so that people can see uh, your skills. Better is to have also a portfolio of sites that you build for other people. If you do projects from uh, some online tutorial, that is okay, but it's not nearly as good. It's got one tenth the power of actual real projects you've done for other people. So that's why I say, once you get out of your fundamentals of code, go out there and build real sites for people. Anyway, back to my story. So uh, through a classified ad, which, which were basically Google, Google ads, so through, we'll call it a Google ad. So through a Google ad, I got my first client, local client in my city. And they had a small business and they wanted to put up a website that had some sort of functionality as well. Very basic though. You have to understand that um, when you are first starting out, you're going to typically contract with small business owners. People are new to the game. And now, that's okay. But the problem with that is that when you're dealing with people who are new to the game, new to business, oftentimes, they're, because they're new, they don't know how to really conduct themselves uh, in a manner in which a far more experienced business owner would. So that means when you do get your first client, you gotta be sure that your contracts are very specific and detailed and they hammer out exactly what they expect from you, what your clients expect from you, and what you expect from the clients. If you don't do that, you're gonna get into something called feature creep, which is gonna be really problematic. So I get my first client and a, a big part of the struggle, if you will, with the first client it's just establishing a professional protocol between you and them. Again, that comes down to solid contracts or simple but detailed vet uh, so everybody knows exactly what to expect in this process. So I was able to do that with some, uh, some you know, push and pull, push and pull, and they get the first contract. And uh, so I delivered the first, um, uh, the first draft of the website and it continued from there uh, meaning first draft and then they give you they ask for revisions and then you finally get it up now here's the thing 
So initially, I was expecting to make, I'm just going to put out a round number, I forget the exact number, but I was expecting to do, I don't know, X amount of hours for a thousand bucks. Because I uh, was still inexperienced at the time in terms of establishing rapport and relationship with the client, uh, I ended up making maybe 650 for my time as opposed to $1,000 for my time. And that was on me because, again, managing your client's expectations and detailing uh, as best you can uh, what the project will consist of is key. This is a skill. This is a skill. So, for example, if you look below, a little shameless self-promotion. My freelance course will provide templates and guides and everything that you need to manage your projects. Um, I had to develop that skill set over time. And as I got better and better at, at, at that aspect of, of the uh, freelancing game, I, my profitability just shot up quite a bit. What you're going to learn when you get into freelance, a lot of the job has to do with managing clients and uh, and just negotiating with them and communication communications with them. That's why I emphasize after you learn your fundamentals, you should learn uh, fundamentals of coding and programming. You should learn how to communicate well and succinctly and to the point professionally. That's going to have a huge impact in terms of career, whether you're a freelancer or whatnot. Anyway, so I landed this first contract, delivered a first uh, project for this small company, and I didn't make as much as I had hoped, significantly less initially, but because I had a good relationship with the client, because they liked the work, this turned into more and more contracts with them over time. And uh, ended up, my rates ended up rising quite a bit because I became much more efficient in terms of my ability to work and much better at communication with them. What happens when you first meet a new client and you're, especially if you're noob, you're new and you're a noob, uh, you're gonna have to uh, expect um, you, it's going to be a little more, a little bit more difficult to negotiate positions because they don't know you, they don't necessarily trust you, etc. So, um, what happens though in the second or third project or the third job that they provide for you, the, the terms of the agreement become much more relaxed because they know you, they trust you, and uh, you deliver on time. You deliver within within the uh, you know within the budget. Etc. Then you have a lot more latitude, and the job is much more easy. So uh, I'll leave you with this: after you do your first freelance job, the next one gets easier. The next one gets easier. The next one gets easier uh, for two reasons: a) because you get better at what you do in terms of coding and workflows; you get better at what you do in terms of client management, proper contracts, etc., uh, managing expectations. And uh, number three is just your reputation gets better. As your reputation improves, uh, your ability to monetize your skill sets, monetize is just a fancy word for make money with your skills, improves vastly. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you like it. If you want to get into freelance game, check below. There's links to my freelance course. Very much loved by everybody. I pour in my uh, years and years, in fact, decades of business and coding experience into that course to make your life easy. Why spend five, 10 years figuring all this stuff out when you can just get in the course? And all it will cost you is a couple, couple cups of coffee for me. All right, thanks a lot. We'll talk soon, bye-bye.